Are you looking for winning science fair ideas? I got you covered. This video is targeted for high school, but if you're older or if you're younger and you're watching with a parent, more props to you. Before we get into it, I want to talk about what level of science fair that you might be working on. I'm going to divide this up into three tiers. Well, four tiers, actually. First, we have the low tier, which is more of like a class project, something your teacher might have assigned, or you just want to work on it for fun. But you do it for class and then you're done. There's no wider audience, there's no competition, maybe you get a grade. Then there's the mid tier, which is like a school level project, and this is something that does have a wider audience. Maybe you're doing a science fair within your school with all the science classes, you're showcasing it to more people, maybe your parents come in and see it, but there's no goal for advancement to a district or regional or state level. That's where the high tier comes in, and these are your competitive science fairs that do have some sort of prize or advancement where you can move forward if your project is good enough. And then if it's really good enough, you are talking about that pro level science fair topic, the one that is going to get you into the Regeneron, the ISEF, Google even has one. But in this video, I'm going to break down all of these tiers and you're welcome to watch the whole thing. But if only a portion applies to you, feel free to jump to that portion in the video and check out the timestamps in the description below. If you're feeling a little shaky or you're unfamiliar with the scientific method or the experimental design process, I recommend checking out some of my other video resources on that topic first. But for the sake of brevity, let's assume that if you're looking to do a science fair project, you're already familiar with good experimental design, and you know that a real scientific experiment, no matter how big or how fancy or how many cool materials you have, should test a variable of some sort and should have some sort of measurement or data collection of another variable. And you're controlling as best you can for other variables that might affect your experiment. If you're just making a baking soda volcano demonstration like you might have seen in so many movies and TV shows for science fair projects, that's not really a science experiment, that's a demo, unless you're comparing different concentrations of different ingredients or somehow measuring explosion size. Then that would be an experiment. But you can generate way cooler, non-cliched science fair project ideas that haven't been done a million times before with a little bit of observation and thought, which is what this video is about. Finally, before we get to the ideas, some other ones that you might want to avoid just because they're so overdone and science teachers everywhere are so sick and tired of these experiments are are flowers and colored water, potato batteries, and product testing. Does X brand work better than X brand at doing something? These are the kind of experiments that are way overdone and not exciting new ideas for a science fair. And lastly, you may be entering a science fair or an engineering fair, but make sure that you clarify the rules and the requirements for whatever thing you're planning this experiment for. The engineering design process is a little bit different than the scientific method. There are engineering fairs as well, which I'll cover in a different video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And one last note before you start thinking of ideas is that you're if you're doing anything involving vertebrates, meaning something with the spine, so humans included, you're probably going to need prior approval from an IRB or Institutional Review Board, sort of like an independent ethics committee. And you have to get this organized and get people on this before you actually begin an experiment, especially for some of the larger competitions. So just be wary of doing anything with human participants or anything with vertebrae before you get started. So low tier science fair projects. Remember, this is a class project, your teacher sees it, you're done. Maybe you've been already given specific constraints, like germinate some radish seeds and change a variable and measure something. Brew root beer, see what termites do under specific conditions. All of these things you might be able to find procedures for online, and you are tasked with changing a variable and measuring something. So think about what you want to change and what you want to measure. Measurements can be qualitative or quantitative, but usually it is easier to collect data if you have some sort of quantitative measurement while you're doing your experiment. For example, if you're looking at the effects of acid rain on seed germination, Maybe you're using an acid and you're treating seeds with different concentrations of this acid and then seeing how tall they germinate or how many of them germinate. Both of those are quantitative measures that you could then put into a data table and generate a graph from. Maybe you want to test the decomposition rate of something. So you put something in a bottle, treat it with a different factor depending on your in independent variable, and then see how long it takes to decompose or break down. Another easy and interesting experiment you can do, as long as you have something to measure it with, is a water loss assay. And so this is when you take leaves of maybe different species and you remove it from the plant and you immediately get the mass of that particular leaf. Over the next hour, every 10 minutes, you, you mass the leaf again 
and you see how much was lost over time, and this is showing you the rate of transpiration for that particular leaf or that particular species. You could do this comparing species, you could do this for different plants in different conditions and then remove the leaves after you've treated the plants in those conditions. It's really up to you. But when you're doing these low tier experiments, think about something that you can change and then something that you can measure, keeping everything else consistent. Let's get to the mid tier now. Now these are experiments that you might need to gather a few extra materials for. Maybe you can do this at home, maybe you can do this with the help of a teacher, but let's just start with ideas. If you're stuck trying to think of ideas, you can always start with something like current events to inspire you. When I was in high school, we were hit by a pretty bad hurricane that knocked out power in a lot of areas and different people had problems accessing clean drinking water. So in the news, there were all these instructions for different ways to purify your water and make sure it was safe to drink. What I did in my science fair experiment was test different water purification methods, and then with the help of a teacher in a controlled environment, looked for bacterial growth after all the samples were purified in different ways. Then we used a quantitative measure to count the bacterial species that grew on Petri dishes. It was a pretty simple experiment, but I did need to make sure I was doing it safely, so that's why I did it under the supervision of a science teacher who allowed me access to an incubator at school, and we followed lots of safety precautions to make sure that bacteria that was growing did not get anywhere else besides the plates. Think about something that's happening in your world that you might be interested in. Maybe you're going back to school and you're curious about how different types of materials for masks filter different things in the wake of the pandemic. Or maybe how it filters sound. Maybe you want to measure decibel levels, I mean through different materials that different masks are made of. Maybe you have access to carbon dioxide sensors and you want to see the metabolic rates or the activity of different invertebrates like crickets or worms or even plants after you expose them to different conditions or temperatures or agitation or music even. But if you're stuck, don't think big, think small. Almost anything in your life can be translated into a scientific experiment. Maybe you put on sunscreen every day and you want to test UV radiation and the sunscreen application. It's really easy to order UV beads that turn a different color when they're exposed to UV rays and you could apply sunscreen to these different beads in different amounts or different times and see when they turn colors in your experiment. Maybe you want to measure the, the biodiversity in different areas that you visit every day. Maybe you could do some sort of quadrant mapping for the biodiversity of an urban area or an area that has lots of activity by your school and then compare that to a park or a forest nearby your home. Maybe you want to look at different types of light pollution and how that affects the visibility of stars in your area. Maybe you go camping and you build fires and you want to test the length of time different wood takes to burn after, after it's treated in different ways or different species of wood. Again, if you're playing with fire, please do it safely with some help of a mentor. <laughs> you can always go back to the tried and true germination experiments and treat seeds in different ways before you get them to germinate. And if you're not sure how to measure something, there are tons of sensors that are actually built into your phone that you can use for measurement. Of course, you have the stopwatch, which you can use for time, but there's apps you can download for different data collection purposes, identifying different plant species, animal species. There's microphones, there's GPS locators, there's light sensors, there's gyroscopes. All of these are ways that you can collect data using your phone. If you're really stuck, think about experiments you've done in class with your teacher or in past classes. Take those experiments or demos and change something. Make a variable of your own and create a measurement of your own. Many times you're one step away from an actual cool inquiry driven experiment. Maybe you like the DNA extraction that you did when you studied biology for the first time. You could do this comparing different organisms and seeing the differences in the amounts of DNA that are produced as long as you use the same quantities of everything along the way. Or you change the concentration or the quantity of one of the ingredients in the procedure for DNA extraction and see if that affects the outcome of the actual extraction. Maybe you did an experiment with isopods or roly polies and you look to see their behavior in a choice chamber. Maybe you want to see how they respond to different types of fruit or different levels of darkness. Their social behavior if you put a lot of them in there at once. Maybe you have access to a microscope and you do want to do an experiment with live cells. It's really easy to do an epidermal peel, peel off cells from a leaf, treat them, and then see how they respond under the microscope. If you still need some inspiration, you can always look at winners in local science fair competitions from previous years and see what they did and use those ideas to create experiments of your own. Speaking of winners, let's talk about that high tier or the pro tier science fair and how to get ideas for those really top tier competitions. These are the ones that go to district, regional, and state, and then maybe even if it's involved in something like, like the Regeneron science fair, can win big prize money and give you lots of accolades and bragging points. Just looking at the winners from the past few years for these competitions can be really intimidating. I mean, these are some of the best science fair projects in the United States. These students are doing amazing work, winning prize or scholarship money, and probably going to the best university 
universities in the country? How do you even begin to come up with ideas and start working on experiments at this level? It comes down to one thing, and that's relationships. Almost all of the really good science fair projects always depend on some sort of mentorship or access to laboratory materials that most high school students don't have access to. Now, some of these top level science fairs do have very strict rules on how much a mentor can actually help you in the experiment, but you do need to have a mentor most of the time and at least get your foot in the door to a sophisticated lab in order to get really good science fair projects going. And no, you don't have to be rich or have scientist parents in order to make this happen. It can literally start with a cold email. And I do have a video on finding local labs, which I'll link in the description below if you're interested in doing this. But there are three steps, I think, to coming up with competitive science fair ideas for these really top tier competitions. One, read up on past participants, and I'll link some of the ones from this past year in the description below if you're curious to see what the experiments were and how in-depth they got in these science fairs. Once you have an idea at the level of work that you'd be expected to do, you should go ahead and start researching a topic that you're really interested in or something that you're passionate about. You don't have to have any idea about what your experiment would be just yet, but you do need to read actual scientific literature, meaning published papers in science journal articles about your topic. You wanna know the most up-to-date research on whatever it is that you're interested in. If learning more about cancer or carbon emissions or behavioral psychology, then you need to read some of the latest research in those topics and you need to read a lot of it. I call this doing your homework. You may even wanna complete a literature review or write a research paper on some of the most current research in that area that you're interested in. And then finally, step three is to connect with a mentor. This is where you're gonna to wanna to use all of the resources in your network. So people at your school, people you might know from your community, your parents know. And if you don't have any connection in those three areas, you can reach out to local labs at colleges, universities, and private institutions in the fields that you're interested in. With any luck, you'll connect with a mentor who will be able to set you on the right path of doing an experiment for these really competitive science fairs. Now, the one tricky part about all of this is you do have to start early. For these top tier competitions like Regeneron, usually the local district and state competitions are in the spring, and then the big competition is later on after April. But the actual experiments take place months before in the fall or the summer leading up to that following school year. So you wanna be prepared and you do have to be in high school in order to enter the Regeneron Science Fair competition. So you want to start thinking early on in high school if this is a direction that you want to go with your science fair work. But very few of these experiments that get to this level are actually done in a backyard. So I really do encourage you to take a look at some of those winning science fair ideas that I'll link below. I hope this has been helpful for you to coming up with your own really great science fair ideas that go above and beyond the classic cliches of volcanoes and flowers. Let me know if you have any questions about coming up with science fair ideas and what other things you want to know about your own scientific experiment. Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.